Hey guys, welcome to another segment of True Reflection, where today I want to talk about self-sabotage. Um, and I want to t- touch on on this subject because it is a subject that needs that we need to have with ourselves. If you have ever at one point in your life ask yourself the question or these questions, what am I doing wrong? Why could I seem to get it right? Why does every relationship that I find myself in has failed? If you have ever asked yourself those questions, what was the answer? What answer did you come up with after asking these questions? Or if you had a trusted friend that you went to for advice and and you asked that particular friend those questions, what advice did that person give you that made you stop and think? of what the possible answer may be. And for me, that was a light bulb moment. I had this conversation with my really dear, dear, dear friend. She is more of a sister to me. And she jokingly asked me, how is the dating life? And, you know, I proceeded to tell her, like, girl, there isn't one. And there isn't one because I don't have any prospects in line. I'm not talking to anybody. I'm not dating anyone. I'm just here. I'm just living life, focusing on myself, focusing on my kids. And just, you know, I'm just doing me right now. And <laughs> and she understood. But what I what I love about what I love about my friend is that she keeps it a hundred percent real, like way real all the time, good or bad. She is that she is that type of friend, and I love that about her. She will always put things into perspective for you. She will always leave you with something to think about. She will give you that uh, hmm, moment to say, well, I'll be damned. I never thought about it that way. And so whilst we're having this open and honest conversation, she reminded me, be careful of self sabotage she basically said it like that she said be careful that you are not self sabotaging yourself and i had to stop and think and i'd be like damn maybe i have been doing it and not realizing it And honestly, as I sat down and I thought about it, I have done it. I have been guilty of purposely ruining my relationships. It was one of those moments where, you know, you were in denial about something. And when you finally face it, you were left speechless. I had one of those moments after I sat down and I thought about what she said. Um, Because sometimes we have, listen, we have two sets of friends. We have the type of friend that's going to be open and honest and give you the cold hard truth no matter how hard it is for you to swallow 
And then we have the other friend that regardless of the, excuse my French, regardless of the bullshit that we do, it's never our fault. They are always on our side, good or bad. You could have been the one that messed up and they still going to be like, you know, well, if this person didn't do this and this person didn't do that, maybe, you know, you, you wouldn't have reacted that way or whatever the case is, blah, blah, blah. You know, we, we have, we, we all have those friends, but the, the friends that we really need is a type of friends that will put things in perspective that can open your mind and open your eyes to the reality of what it really is. And honestly, she is that friend for me. She is that friend for me. I can have any and every type of conversation with her and whether I like it or not, she is basically going to tell me what it is. She is not going to be biased. She is going to give me an honest, unbiased opinion. And I love that about her. So when she said to me, be careful that you are not self-sabotaging. And I realized that at some point in time in my life, I did it and I did it purposely. And I also realized that now being single, being single and not meeting anyone and not, and I'm not trying to meet anyone, it's a little bit of me doing it consciously and a little bit of me doing it subconsciously. And the thing is, for many of us, after coming out of a horrible situation, we tend to use that situation as an excuse. Um, everybody in our life that we have encountered, whether this person is in our life for a long period of time or if it's just a brief moment, everyone has come into our life to teach us something. And every failed relationship teaches us something about ourselves. It helped us to grow. It helped us to understand and know our likes and dislike, what we want and what we don't want, what we will accept and what we will not accept. And so after coming out of a horrible relationship for me, this is my personal experience. I've been, I was in, in a horrible relationship with a narcissist and that relationship taught me a lot. After that relationship ended, I had went on a journey. It was a self-healing journey. It was a journey that I very much needed. It was a journey of self-discovery because I had to rediscover myself or who I was. It was a journey where I had to look at my flaws, acknowledge them, accept them for what they were. And more importantly, I had to learn how to love myself again. And so after going through the healing process, and discovering myself and falling in love with myself, somehow along the way, I have become content in my singleness. Somehow along the way, I have become 
so comfortable, so happy, so content, and not being with anyone and not putting up with anyone's excuse my French again with anyone's drama and and the bullshit that I have no room in my life for it. And so when anyone when anyone tries to talk to me on a personal level as far as getting to know me is concerned, I at times found myself deliberately and purposely finding reasons as to why I don't want to talk to this person. And mind you, um, I know what I want. I do know what I want. I know what I do not want. But even in my doing that, I <laughs> I have learned to not ignore red red flags. And I don't want to I don't want to just settle for being with someone just for being with someone's sake. You know, especially having kids, you you have to be you have to be cautious. You have to be careful because you don't want to be parading different people in and out of your kids' lives. Like like that that is another subject altogether, and you know I don't want to do that. And oftentimes people say, um, "You need to stop being so picky." People think that I'm picky. Um, let me just say that I am not picky. I really am not. Am I cautious? Yes. I'm very cautious. I have become extremely cautious. But I'm definitely not picky. I'm, I'm, I'm definitely not picky. But with me being so cautious of my sanity of my happiness of my life of just being cautious all around i realize in all of my cautiousness that is where my self sabotaging traits starts to kick in i realize that because I have met, I have met, I have met a person that, that I found, that I have found to be interesting and we were getting along, we were getting along great. We were getting along great. And then all of a sudden, all of a sudden I, I started doing things to, you know, to turn him off, to run him off, to scare him off. Because the idea of allowing another person into my life the way that I did in my previous relationship to hurt me to the point of almost breaking me, I did not want to go through it again. I honestly did not want to go through that again. I honestly didn't want to do it again. And this guy, this guy was such a gentleman. He was really quiet. Is really, you know, he was an all-around decent guy. And if I hadn't purposely done things to scare him off, I probably would have been in a relationship with him right now. I can honestly say that if I hadn't self-sabotage that situation, and this was like at the getting to know each other 
stage. I can honestly say, had I not purposely done it, that me and this person would have been in a relationship. And so with me self-sabotaging myself, as far as relationships is concerned, is that I'm not allowing myself to be open enough to allow people to get close to me. And that is self-sabotaging in itself. In my instance, if I'm, if I allow myself to, you know, you know what, let me just talk to this person and, and see where it goes. As soon as I feel, as soon as I feel like this person is getting a little too close to me, then I start to pull away. I start to pull away and I start to, I guess, nitpick at things, reasons as to why I don't want to talk to this person anymore. I start to nitpick at little things. Um, All of a sudden, let's just say, Let's just say, for example, that um, I was talking to started talking to to Tom for about a month, a month and a half, for example, and it's going great. It's going it's going really good, you know. And then all of a sudden, I'm finding reasons, and I'd be finding like silly little reasons, like. I don't like the way Tom laughs all of a sudden. Like, girl, you've been talking to this dude for like almost three months. All of a sudden, you don't like the way that he laughs? Really? All of a sudden, the sound of his voice annoys you? Really? Like, it's, and, and and for me, it's it's little... <laughs> it's sad to say it's, it's little things... It's little things like that, that... That I start to that I start to convince myself to be the reason why I don't want to continue getting to know this person. And it's <laughs> and it's crazy because it's the like for me the, the scary part of it the scary part of it now is because I have become so content in myself. I have become so content in myself that I would do things that I would I would literally do things just to ruin just to ruin it. I would deliberately do, deliberately do things just to ruin it and it's crazy when my friend said, you know, be careful that you're not self-sabotaging yourself as um so you don't, you know, get into a relationship or or to meet somebody because I understand that you know what you want and you and you're being cautious and you don't want to settle but at the same token you have to open yourself up to allow people to get to know you and when she said that I'm like damn I have done that and I'm like golly this girl hit the nail right on the head because I have done it I But I'm also a firm believer that, you know, if it's meant to be, it will be. If it's yours, it will always be yours. And sometimes the self-sabotage don't even have to be like romantic wise. It can be friendship wise also. You know, it can be as far family wise. But in this instance, for me, it's kind of like sabotaging self-sabotaging love so or have you have you ever find yourself in a relationship with someone okay because you know many of us out there are dating people or or in in a relationship with someone at this very moment do you find yourself 
questioning the other person's motives. Are you now dating somebody where it's going great? Have you been dating someone for maybe about six months to a year, two years, and the relationship is going great? You know, you're having fun, she's having fun, or he's having fun. You know, this person is treating you. Because, and the thing is, this is more directed toward females because we have the tendency to do the whole self sabotaging thing. We have the tendency as women to find reasons why we don't want to entertain the guy anymore. (laughs) So, ladies, are you dating someone at this very moment and the relationship is going great? He's an upstanding guy. He's an all-around guy. Does he have his flaws? Yes. Is he perfect? No. Does he do, does he do little things that gets on your last good nerves? Yes. But overall, as you stop and think to yourself, is he an all-around good, decent guy? Is he treating you the way that you want to be treated? Is he consistent in his actions? Is he thoughtful and considerate in his words, in his actions, the, in the way that he speaks to you, the, the way that he interacts with you, in the way that he, he holds you? Is he what you've always imagined your boyfriend, future husband to be? Is he? And if he is, are you now holding your breath and waiting for the other foot to drop? Are you? And if you are at that stage in your relationship where you find yourself questioning his motives, are you now at that stage where you are deliberately, purposely saying things and doing things To see if he is going to get upset and fed up and be like, man, forget it. I don't don't want to go through this anymore. If you are doing it right now, please stop. Please stop it. Like, recognize the signs. Like, stop. Not every guy is coming into your life to hurt you. And if he hasn't given you any reasons to question his motives please stop please do not self sabotage your only chance of happiness please don't do that if the other foot was going to drop after a year of dating that person it probably would have already dropped Mind you, is, is, your, is your relationship perfect right now? No. Are you guys having like little lover, lovers squirrels and little arguments or whatever? Yes. But is he still there? Has his actions changed towards you? Has he given you any indication or any reasons that you feel like you have to question his feelings for you. If he hasn't, stop. Please do not self-sabotage the good thing that you have going on right now. Because we women have the tendency to do that. And please don't allow outside influences to get into your head to convince you otherwise so that you can proceed to self-sabotage 
your relationship and what you have going on right now. So now you're asking yourself, how am I self-sabotaging when I don't even know that I'm doing it? (laughs) Sometimes you can be so accustomed to doing something that you don't even know when you're doing it. Like for me, sometimes sometimes I'm aware when I'm doing the whole self-sabotaging and sometimes I don't even know that I'm doing it until it's too late. So how to avoid self-sabotaging your relationship? How can you stop yourself before you start or in the midst of trying to find a way to push him away because you feel like he's too good to be true? Sometimes it is. I'm not going to lie. Sometimes it is too good to be true. Because people are great pretenders. So at times you have to be cautious. You have to be cautious that, you know, that you're not being duped. (laughs) You know, because, you know, sometimes a person can be so good that they're too good. (laughs) Yes, it happens sometimes, but... When you have prayed about the situation and you have prayed about this person and you have asked God to give you the spirit of discernment and to open your eyes and to show you any signs of indication that this person is not the person for you. If you have prayed about it and your spirit hasn't given you because your spirit, spirits don't lie. If your spirits haven't given you any reason for you not to trust in the love that this person is showering you with, please do not purposely ruin it for yourself. Because a person can only pretend for so long before the truth comes out. You know what I mean? A person can only pretend for so long before their true self starts to show. So if you have been dating, if you have been dating a person for so long and after all of your crazy antics to push him away and he still stays, he is still there with you, hold on to them. Hold on to them. Please hold on to them. So now, how do we avoid self-sabotaging our relationships? Well, first of all, you have to understand what triggers you to start feeling as though you have to start doing things to push a person away. Find your triggers. Because genuinely, it is always something that will trigger you into feeling as though, okay, you know, now, you know what, um, I have been dating Brad for, for two months and we haven't had one argument. Mm-mm. I got to find something to start an argument. Why? <laughs> Why? Because you want to argue and the thing is it's not that brad isn't um having had opportunities to start an argument with you it's just that he has learned to pick his battles he has learned what to give his time and energy to (laughs) and if brad is a libra brad is simply avoiding the drama (laughs) sorry this is just this is just like you know a little jab at my at my Libra friends because Libras are so they're such um they are they are gentle people they they look for balance for peace and harmony 
so they avoid arguments at all costs okay so it's just a little joke at the leapers <laughs> but hold on hold on hold on i love my leapers though i love my leapers because leapers leapers are leapers are are where it's at right now <laughs> and no before anybody get any crazy ideas no there isn't a libra that i'm interested in there isn't a libra that i'm trying to get with or whatever the case i am as single as single can be <laughs> no but seriously let's get back to the topic but um but seriously though maybe this person just isn't a problematic person you know maybe this person recognize your antics and just choose to ignore it because they care about you so much that they choose not to engage you in whatever you were trying to do to kick up an argument you know um so if things are going well just just let it go just just let it be I am a firm believer in letting things flow naturally. So you have to identify within yourself what is your natural thought process that triggers you into thinking that just because you're not having an argument in your relationship that, you know, it's too good to be true that something is wrong so you need to do something to, to to kick up an argument and possibly ending your relationship based on the type of argument find your triggers the next thing that you can do and this is oh my god this is for me this is for me this is me giving myself advice be mindful of your behaviors be mindful of your actions. Be mindful of the things that you do. Because, baby, let me tell you about me. When I, <laughs> when I am mindfully and purposely self-sabotaging what I got going on, I be kicking up the worst attitude and don't even know why. <laughs> like for real. Like when I was giving the example earlier, I was saying um all of a sudden I'm nitpicking that I don't like the way this person sounds, the way that he talks. And so I developed this attitude that you know just the sound of this person's voice becomes annoying. Mm-hmm. The sound of this person's voice become annoying. And you know what? I don't like to be annoyed. And if you start to annoy me, I'm going to kick up an attitude. Oh, and nobody wants to see me have an attitude. Trust. Mm-hmm. Because it can get nasty. <laughs> so for me, I have to be mindful of my behaviors. Like, I... Like, for me... And the thing is, I think I can... I can almost guarantee at the exact point of me getting to know someone where I'm going to start like doing things to make this person be like, you know what? I don't even want to mess with this chick no more. And then I'll be like, oh, well, see, it is what it is. I don't care. And then I'll be having like this indifference, like don't care attitude because I know what I've done. Because I know what I've done to purposely push you away from me. Because the thing is, sometimes I have done it in the past that if I'm in a relationship with, if I'm in a relationship with someone and, you know, I start to feel a certain type of way where I don't want to be with this person anymore. First of all, I'm not going to cheat. I am not a cheater. Before I cheat on you, I'm going to leave. I'm, I'm going to break up with you. If I want to break up with you and you don't want to break up with me, then I will start to do things to make you hate me. Hey, 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 hey. Don't ask me what I do. Okay. Just know that I do things. <laughs> Which is another form of self-sabotage because like why why would I do that? It's, and the thing is is like 
every relationship have ups and downs every relationship has their problems and i and and the thing and honestly i can say my toxic my toxic trait in a relationship if self is self sabotaging my toxic trait in a relationship is honestly self sabotaging because i just basically like i said i start to do things to make you to make you want to break up with me because when i wanted to break up with you you didn't want to break up with me so now i'm going to make you hate me so that you can break up with me <laughs> in what world does that make sense tell me in what world does that shit make sense it makes absolutely positively no sense so for me like tip number 2 is kind of like for me because i have to be mindful because i know sometimes i know what i'm doing it like really like really so it's almost like it's almost always like after a breakup like i don't i'm not even bothered by it <laughs> because technically i initiated it i i i i sabotaged the whole the whole thing So you have to be mindful of your behaviors and when you find yourself when you find yourself doing doing that mess when you find yourself doing that mess you have to stop yourself in the track. You have to stop yourself in the track especially if it's someone that you that you really want to be with that someone that you really love and someone that you can see yourself being being with in the future for a, a, a long period of time you have to be you have to be mindful you have to be mindful of your behaviors another thing that you can do to avoid self sabotaging your relationship is that you have to you have to put, you have to put your leave your past in the past you have to be able to decipher and to differentiate your past from your present and again and again for me presently and again for me presently this is how i self sabotage anyone or any any opportunity of anybody trying to get close to me because i am now I am now using my past relationship that broke me as an excuse and a reason as to why I'm not allowing people to get close to me. I am now picking and looking for things that are not even there. things that were in my past relationship or characteristic that my ex had possessed I am now applying them to this person that that is like the complete opposite like night and day you know so you have to be able to leave your past in the past and the thing is not I'm not and the thing is I'm not even I don't want to say that I'm beating I'm beating a person with another person's stick because I genuinely believe anybody that you meet in your life in your future that you come up that you come across deserves deserves a fair and honest chance. They like start off of a clean slate. And then I'm also a firm firm believer in after a relationship ends heal at your pace heal at your pace no matter how long it takes for you to heal to get over that hurt to get over that heartache you take as long as you want to take take as much time that you feel that you need to ensure that you are healed so that you don't carry old hurt and old baggage into your new and present relationship so that in itself don't become a form of self sabotage you don't want to self sabotage something new 
before it even gets started. So for me, so again, for me, again, for me, I'm using, I'm using my past relationship as an excuse to say, Hey, you know what? Oh, um, I don't want to, I don't want to entertain this person no more because I feel and nine out of 10 times you're wrong because they're totally and complete opposites, like totally different. So decipher the past from the present. That's another way that you can avoid self-sabotaging. Um, I guess another way, and I guess this, this one goes out, this, this one is more so for the men. This one is more so for the men. You have to communicate. You have to communicate because sometimes, sometimes we can self-sabotage our relationship based on lack of communication. The person that you are interested in, the person that you are in a relationship in, your spouse, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your partner, whichever term that you want to use, should never have to guess should never have to guess where you stand or where they stand in your life communicate because oftentimes self-sabotage can begin with lack of communication that's another form of of self-sabotaging you need we need to learn how to open ourselves up and the thing is i understand that men like a lot of us are not vocal creatures we're not we're not vocal especially when it comes to emotions especially when it comes to emotions you don't want to you don't want to open yourself up so much because with when you start to open yourself up to somebody, when you start to genuinely communicate your private thoughts with another person, you're going to develop feelings for the person because it's going to bring you closer. That is a form of intimacy, believe it or not. That is another form of intimacy is when you can openly communicate your feelings with your mate, with your, with your partner, with your husband or with your wife. Open yourself up. You become vulnerable. So the lack of communication, it keeps you, I guess at a safe distance almost it keeps you at a safe distance because you don't want to get too close and so that's another that's another form of self sabotaging because you can meet this person you can meet someone you have a great connection you get along well or whatever but when it's time to communicate real emotions you're handicapped. You're a mute. You don't have nothing to say. But the chemistry, the chemistry between you and this person is amazing. You guys get along great. And the only thing that this person is asking from um, from you is to communicate with them and to let them know where they stand in your life because nobody nobody really wants to guess and again and again females sometimes like if we are hurting we have to communicate with these men we have to communicate with them because they can't read our minds the same way if if you are 
if you are uh, um, dealing with with a guy that never communicate his feelings for you as to how much he likes you or how much he wants to be with you and wants you in in his life or express express how he wants you to to be his 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 lady and possibly his wife and the mother of his kids it is frustrating for us when men don't don't tell us how they feel it is frustrating for us so can you imagine how frustrating it is for them when we are hurting and they ask us what's wrong and we don't communicate with them like seriously come on like be real <laughs> so uh, to avoid self sabotaging you have to be able to communicate with each other or communicate communicate your worries and your fears if you have any concerns if after the relationship has been going on so well not perfect but well for the past nine to ten months to a year to a year and a half and you start to have reservations then you have start to have concerns where you're waiting for the other shoe to drop because you feel like okay you know what this is too good to be true because it's like you feel like you don't deserve to be this happy you don't deserve to be to have a good person in your life that loves you so fiercely and so passionately the way that this person has come into your life and shown you what love is or what love can be and you start to have reservations communicate those fears to the person that you are talking to or to the person that you're dating communicate those those uh, um, those concerns let them know what you are doing because if you don't, then you are going to start falling into all habits of self-sabotaging. And the next thing you know, the relationship ends and you're, and you're single again. Okay, so we have to learn how to communicate that. Um, another thing that we can do... Shit, I, sh I probably should have Googled this, this, this thing because now I feel like I'm, I'm struggling to find, um, to find things. Um... Oh my God. <laughs> Another thing that, that, that you can do, um, to avoid self-sabotaging is understand your attachment style. Understand how quickly or how long it takes for you to get attached or to get comfortable with someone because that also in itself can be a form of self-sabotaging identify within yourself are you a person that craves attention 24 7 It may sound funny. Listen, it may sound funny, but listen, but it is. It is. It it's a thing because I I have known people to break up with 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 their boyfriend or their girlfriend because they feel as though they 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 didn't get enough attention. Mind you, you have to understand that you have to understand that everybody is their own individual. So just because I'm dating you or you're dating me and we spend the majority and the, the majority of our time together, if I go one day and I didn't talk to you, please do not. I mean, this is just an example because, you know, if you're dating somebody who goes a full day without talking to their, to their person, right? <laughs> but I'm just saying... If you are a person that craves attention, the moment that you stop getting that attention, you are going to you are going to do things to self-sabotage what you got going on. Let's just say <laughs> let's just say that um for instance, uh you're a person that's territorial. 
and let's say that you and your husband you and your husband spend a whole lot of time together and you know normally when you guys hang out like his attention span is basically on you but it's, it's always just on you or even if you go out in a group setting where it's a his and her matchup double date triple date type of situation so generally generally his attention or her attention is going to be solely on you but let's say it's a it's a group gathering or it's a party do you honestly realistically expect for this person to not mingle with other people like really do you realistically expect expect this person to just you know just stand there with you through the um, through the whole mess and not you know walk around and mingle with other people and have other conversations with different people now come on be realistic be realistic because if i'm at a party if I'm at a party with with my um, with my boyfriend or or my uh, um, girlfriend, I mean, it's a girlfriend. Jesus Christ! Oh, Jesus! I say a girlfriend. I'm gonna be like, oh, so okay, that's why you like girls. No, I'm not into girls. <laughs> it was a slip of the tongue. But if I'm at a party with my with my boyfriend or my husband or whatever the case is, after. I have gotten over my my whole social anxiety thing because I whew, Jesus Christ I I don't I don't do crowds oh I hate crowds I get really anxious in big crowds but after I've gotten to my comfort level or whatever the case is I he could be across the room talking to uh, to whatever the case is, to whoever and I could be on the other side mingling and having fun or whatever because you know gradually we are going to find our way back to each other and hang out within within each other and everybody have a good time so you don't want to be you don't want to be like one of those persons that seeks attention so much that the minute that the second that you feel like you're not getting enough attention, then you start to do things that's going to self-sabotage the whole relationship, <laughs> right? And so the other thing I wanna touch on is how do we deal with a self-sabotaging partner? Okay, so we will, this probably need like a part two so the part two will be how do we deal with a self-sabotaging partner and we will pick this discussion um this conversation up tomorrow but i just really like when when, when my girl when my girl like said that to me I was like damn I have I have to talk about this because I am so guilty of it I have done it before and I know um, I probably just chewed and talk you guys ears off um, with this or whatever the case is but for this for me for me this is like such an an awe moment like damn you know so please I'm sorry if I chewed your your ears off on this show today <laughs> but um i just wanted to basically touch on that because you know that is a topic that needs to be had that needs to be touched on that need to be discussed whether it's with yourself self-acknowledgement is always important and so later on we will discuss how to deal with a self-sabotaging partner Okay, so thank you so much for tuning in. God bless.